Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. This week it's me and Connor and we've got blooming loads. Check this out, right? New bikes from Pinarello, BMC and Van Rysel, as well as hot new tech from Oakley, Rota and Physique, the Bike Vault, your upgrades and our main talking point this week. This new 3D printed bike, which is exploding on Indiegogo, raising over two and a half million dollars in just a few days. Let's do it. Before we get onto this week's main talking point, we have the results of the poll from last week's, which was about the new classified rear hub, which features internal gears. And we asked you, will it kill off front derailleurs and take off, or will it just be a flash in the pan? The results of the poll were pretty convincing. 64% of you said, no, flash in the pan. So, well, I guess that's, that's that then. That's, that's that settled. Um, cool. Well, onto this week's talking point, which we're definitely going to have a poll on as well, because I'm really keen to see what you lot think of this. It's a new 3D printed bike, which is currently exploding on the crowdfunding site Indiegogo, having raised over two and a half million dollars in just a few days. Well, that's over two million uh, pounds if you're in the UK, which is blooming loads. And it's two and a half thousand times its funding target that it set itself. So what is it and why has it got backers so excited? Well, it's called the Superstrata and it's not just exciting because it doesn't have a seat post. It promises to be the world's first 3D printed, fully customizable, uniform carbon fiber bike. Sounds pretty cool, that, um, doesn't it? And even though it has 3D printed wheels as well. And it doesn't end there. Because it's 3D printed, the makers claim that they're going to be able to make it fully customizable with regards to the frame size. So it should be able to fit riders ranging from four foot seven to seven foot four. And even, I'll even fit you, Connor. Where do I sign up, Ollie? Well, Connor, there's more. So the thermoplastic carbon fiber that this bike is said to be made from um, is said to be still really light. So they reckon that they can get the frame weight to 1300 grams, although they don't specify the size for that. Now that's competitive against a normal carbon frame. It's in a similar kind of ballpark, I guess. But they say that this material has much better impact resistance than traditional carbon fiber. And they reckon it's totally 100% recyclable, which is a huge advantage because normal carbon fiber that's made in a traditional layup process isn't recyclable. And it's kind of a bit of an issue. Also, a 3D printed frame made of lasers and robots could lead to greater manufacturing consistency and also less human error compared to traditional layup techniques. A great advantage, I think. Yeah, it's a good point. Also, the crowdfunding page is, well, littered with a whole host of exciting claims and features, such as the thermoplastic carbon being 61 times stronger than steel. There's also plans for an e-bike version that costs just $2,000 or £2,000, and a normal version as well, and integrated lights and power meters and all sorts of cool stuff. Whoa, 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 whoa. That sounds great and everything, but we have kind of been here before, haven't we? Have we? Yeah, remember SpeedX? Cy si definitely does. This is the SpeedX Leopard. Now there's not many of these in the wild yet, but there will be soon. This is a really, really innovative bike. The big thing is the integrated bike computer. Then the innovations don't stop there because the back of this seat pillar here, you've got a rear light that's activated when the light center detects that it's getting dark. The SpeedX was another crowdfunding hit that infamously never really materialized and ended up being a massive flop. Now, we don't know whether the Superstrata will succeed or fail, but the SpeedX should serve as a cautionary tale about how hard it actually is to turn a crowdfunding model and an idea into then a working model and then a mass production model. It's a difficult ask. I have to say there were a couple of red flags on the promotional video and fundraising page, um, which were pointed out by cycling tips. So if you watch the fundraise, well, the video, you'll see that at 1.45, the timestamp, the frame completely changes to a design with no seat stays and a seat tube, weird. Um, and then at 148, there appears to be a broken freewheel that keeps the pedals spinning. And at 153, 
There is a geared bike uh, that appears to be set up as a single speed, which then bizarrely also features as a picture on the fundraising page, complete with a caption uh, which describes that quality is ensured by bike loving pros. And there's a mechanic who's sort of lovingly looking over the bike like a pro mechanic, but hasn't noticed that he needs to thread the chain through the derailleur. <laughs> to be fair to it though, you know, in, in its defense, these inconsistencies should serve to demonstrate that it isn't the finished product yet. And success in these crowdfunding campaigns is by no means guaranteed. So I guess we'll just have to see uh, how it happens. But we're really keen to know what you think. So you know what to do. We're going to have a poll in the app. So if you click on screen now, it will take you through to that poll and vote. Do you think that the 3D printed Superstrata will be a roaring success? Or do you think it will be a crowdfunding flop? Let us know and uh, we'll reveal the results next week. Right. Time for some hot tech. First up this week, we have got some new Pinarellos. Yeah, that's right. Pinarello announced a new Paris model, a firm favorite of the past and also a new Prince. Now, the Paris is focused on comfort with space for a tire clearance of up to 30 mil. Now, these bikes are intended to be a little more affordable than the range topping Dogma F12. Both the Prince and Paris draw heavily on the technological innovations of the F12, offering significant aerodynamic advantages and also an increase in strength and ride feel, courtesy of Pinarello's famous asymmetric Onda design. A new bike this week and I have to say it's a rather tasty one. The new BMC Team Machine has just launched. So the Team Machine, if you're unfamiliar, is BMC's top of the range kind of do it all, all round a race bike. And the new bike has several new features, including an integrated aero cockpit, one piece bar and stem, which looks rather smart. All the cables go through that. The down tube has been completely revised as well. So it's now wider and it has the edges removed on it to hopefully improve aerodynamics and make it stiffer. I especially like the sort of stealthy dropouts on this bike. They're just really clean and neat. So rather than having a permanent lever on the through axle sticking out into the wind, uh, you can just use an Allen key and pop that in if you need to. But they've been doing this on BMC bikes for a while now, but it, it, I'm a big fan of it. It just looks smart and it tidies up the, the bike, especially at the front end and makes it a teeny weeny bit more aerodynamic. Tire clearance is 30 millimeters and the claimed weight for a size 54 is just 840 grams, which I think is pretty impressive for uh, a disc brake bike. So I look forward to seeing it and stay tuned because hopefully I will be getting my hands on one for a first look video. So, well, hopefully you look forward to that. I certainly do. Another new bike now, courtesy of Van Riesel. Now I've long been a fan of the value that can be found and is offered often by decathlon road bikes and their latest sort of top of the range model has really caught my attention. So this is the Van Riesel EDR CF940. It's an endurance geometry road bike. Um, so a bit higher at the front end, a bit shorter in the top tube, plenty of tire clearance, that sort of thing. But what really caught my attention is this is a, a carbon fiber road bike that weighs just 6.6 .6 kilograms claimed um, with full Jura Ace group set and it's available for just £3,700, which is incredibly competitive. Campagnolo have announced a sizable move into the gravel market with the announcement of their new Shamel carbon disc brake wheel set. Now, they come with wider rim profiles, improved vibration damping, and the focus is on rider comfort and control when the road turns a little less smooth. Campagnolo say that the wheels can fit a tyre as narrow as 23mm, but they're designed to perform best with tyres that are 25, 28 and even 30mm. But the wheel set can accommodate tyres of up to 65mm in width, which is rather impressive. Now, the wheel set weighs 1585 grams and comes in at around 1300 euros. Hot new saddles now as Physique expands its 3D printed adaptive range. Check these out. 
So these are the Adaptive Antares versus Evo R1 and R3 models. They're intended to be more affordable versions of the top of the range one that was launched last year and is behind me there. Um, and the R3 model has uh, an alloy rail as well. Now they're available in two different widths, 139 millimeters and 149 millimeters, depending on the width of your Israel tuberosities, sit bones. The new saddles are also available in this rather smart black, which I'm a big fan of. I think that looks really smart. And the adaptive 3D printed mesh isn't just for looks, even though it does look cool. It's also said to be superior ergonomically, uh, providing better padding and it's just a better structure adapting to your shape and giving you comfort while you ride. And quite a few people expressed concerns about it, myself included in this, that it could be quite difficult to clean. and that mesh structure could be you know a real sponge for dirt uh, so physique looked into this and have looked at the longevity of the saddle and they're satisfied that it's actually really easy to clean if you spray it with a strong hose or jet wash it they reckon that all the dirt just washes out really easily which is well cool in a bid to make buying a power meter more simple rotor have announced their new power packs option which basically means you can buy a power meter bundle that is going to be compatible with your bike to save you time having to sign of search for different components and make everything fit with different bottom bracket standards or crank lengths, for instance. And we think this is a great idea and makes the rotor power meters a bit more compatible with the bike and a bit simpler to get going and measuring those all important watts. Finally, in hot tech this week, we've got some hot new shades from Oakley. Check these out. This is the Kakuru collection, which has been designed by the renowned artist Maguru Yamaguchi. The new range has been created to unite and inspire athletes of all abilities through a shared love of sport, which is nice. And to mark the launch of the new collection, Oakley has actually donated $200,000 to the World Health Organization for the solidarity response against COVID-19, which is also rather nice. Incidentally, Kakuru is actually a Japanese word meaning heart, mind, spirit. And as an Oakley ambassador, uh, Mark Cavendish will be wearing the new collection, hopefully at the Tour de France, because hopefully he gets uh, selected this year. I'd love to see him racing there. And the new collection is gonna be available throughout the Oakley range in different frame styles as well. So these are the Radar uh, EVs, um, but also these are the EV blades as well to illustrate that. Nice, sort of bright, vibrant colours, but not garish, I'd say. I, I like those. But what do you think? Let's have a poll in the app. Hot or not? You be the judge. More hot tech next week. Right, it's time for Screw Riding Upgrades by Upgrades, where you guys submit any upgrades you may have done to your bike, anything that you may have done to change your cycling lives, for your chance to win the ultimate prize here at GCN, a cycling cap. Nice. Now, we have some amazing submissions this week, but first, let's take a look at last week and see who won that all-important cap. And they were two great submissions, weren't they? And we had, if you remember, Fitty Retro's Rebuild Celeste cafe bike and Robin Guitar's Restored Budget Road Bike. I mean, look at them, beautiful. But it was Fitty's Retro Rebuild that proved most popular with you guys on the app, taking 56% of the vote. So congratulations, Fitty's Retro. A cap is on its way to you. There you go, did you get it? Oh, it might, yeah, it might, might take a few days in the Irish Post. Fingers. Got cat pair now. Anyway, on with this week's submissions. So, first up, we have Stefan Menard Facebook. And this is two old cheap, old steel bike frames in the parents' cave, transformed to sort of gravel bike. Sandblasted and painted, frame and fork, pretty much replaced all other parts, upgraded from used parts to keep prices as low as possible. Saw a group set, new wheel to fit the nine speed cassette, cantilever brakes, needed a new stop that was not on the frame which was using v brakes so took the stop from the other frame and welded it not looking good but holding strong thanks for the gcn tech videos of a similar project last fall helped a lot especially for the headset adapter so that is that's so great that's a great one proper kind of save from the uh, save from the rubbish bin style style build i think but uh, i think to be honest the, the original frame looks spectacular as well I like how he's uh, he's kept 
he's kept the uh, the similar sort of paint job and ethics of the bike. I especially love those um, those kind of quick release skewers. They look brilliant. Be interesting to see what everyone thinks of that. So next up, we have a submission here by Fabst. And he says, I got this, or she, couldn't be sure actually, sorry. I got this vintage bike on eBay for 80 euros and turned it into my own vision of a retro single speed bike. It was my first build and a lot of fun. Cleaning and greasing old parts has a huge effect. I chose a matte black paint with red accents. It's a joy to ride and I'm more than happy with the results. Well fabst, this looks spectacular as well. I like the fact that you've kept the uh, badge on the, on the head tube there. And I think you might have given it your own sort of customization as well. Spectacular. I actually like the paint job on the old uh, the old frame as well. It would have been nice if you could have kept the colour scheme going, but the, the, the colour scheme you've chosen is great. I'm just picking holes here. Tan sidewalls as well. Brilliant. Looking spectacular. I love a single speed as well. I miss my single speed. Red chain. Interesting. Interesting. So. That is this week's submissions on screw riding upgrades, buy upgrades. Get voting over on the GCN app and I'll be interested to see what you all think. Remember, you have the chance to win a GCN cap. So get voting everyone, thank you. I'm back. <laughs> right, so last time when I was on the bike fault, I don't think I was ruthless enough, if I'm honest. I'm sorry, I don't think I kind of stood for the values that the bike vault represents. So this time, I'm gonna be a lot more ruthless. You know, if, you get, if you're gonna get a super nice from me, you have to earn it. So with that in mind, let's go. We've got five bike vaults here to choose from. So the first, dana.png. Now, this is a Planet X with, from 2016. And oh, it's nice, it's nice, nice Dana like the kind of black matte black all over gold chain can't beat a gold chain if i'm honest though those cranks that looks like two o'clock to me maybe half past two you know so i've been told i can't i can't submit it with that i don't write the rules so i'm sorry the bell the bell isn't being wrong it's a nice from me moving on ashman underscore c and this is a giant TCR composite from 2011. Nice bike, actually. I like what you've done with the sort of landscape here, but it's, it kind of made the image a bit busy. I think I need more sort of, of a plain background to be able to see a bit clearer. Whilst I do like it, I like the tan walls, your crank is pretty much at three o'clock. What I'm gonna pick holes in here is the white bar tape. Now it matches the saddle, I know, but I'm just not a fan of white bar tape. It's, it's a bike. It's gonna get dirty. That white bar tape isn't gonna stay white. So for that reason, it's a, it's, a, it's a nice from me. It's not, it's not it's, you know, I've been told I have to be ruthless here. So hands up, sorry. Next we have, wow. So this is, I can't pronounce this. I think this is a, been written in code, this name. Ku gmw 4 gue my wife, yes, she likes it, and I, since this week, are the happy owners of this very special Cornago for Ferrari from 2011. It's in mint condition, equipped with all the accessories such as brochure and frame certificate, and only 500 were made. Now, this is a great submission, but I'm not sure on this, because to me, that looks like it's been taken in a museum. That's setting a precedent on the bike fault. We can't all be going around into museums taking photos of bikes, can we? I mean, I'm, we're going to need more proof that you actually own the bike. So I'm going to leave it on the pile. I'm not going to judge it until I think we need you in the photo. You know, you're riding it at the very least. Otherwise, I'm going to assume that this is a museum piece. And, you know, it needs to be your bike to be in the bike fault. So for that reason, it's, it's, an, it's an unprecedented time. I'm not going to give it a nice or a super nice until more evidence is in. So we'll, we'll keep on going. We'll keep on going. But yeah. Next one, T-Web. This bike is faster than me. Now this is a giant TCR, the Maglia Rosa edition from 2017. Was that the year when uh, the mood and went, you know, you know, he did a, on the, yeah, you know, cut short. <clears throat> Could be the bike. That's a thought. Have, have you thought of that? T-Web. Anyway, sw swiftly moving on. Don't want to dwell. 
Um, this is a great submission, I love it. I, I do like the paint job. I love the paint job, love pink on a bike. I love also an integrated seat post. I've just got a thing for them, I think they're great. Bit unpractical for me because they never fit in a bike box, but I love them on a bike. Um, my only thoughts with this, okay, right. So, where do we start? Valves aren't aligned. Crank isn't at three o'clock. And only one bottle cage. What happens if you're doing a long ride? Do you go thirsty? Also, so it's one by, let me see this. So, it's one by, which I've got no problem with at all. I don't think it's a one by group set. Because it's, it's an Ultegra crank. I think, I think he's just put, I think he's just put a one by chain ring on an Ultegra crank arm. So I, I can't quite understand it. He's gonna drop his chain. It's, it's not making sense to me. That's not a one by group set. So I'm gonna give it a nice on the paint job and I'm gonna wish you luck. I hope uh, you cleaned it when you got the bike. Next up, anyway, Benjamin Post for Now, what have we got here? A light speed ultimate. Wow, this is nice now. 1998, horizontal top tube, yellow bar tape with matching bottle cages, which also match the color of the light, it's light speed. Um, oh, shallow rims, I love shallow rims on a bike, especially the horizontal top tube, it's brilliant. But I'm told you can't give a super nice unless the cranks are at three o'clock, so between me and you, super nice, but no, just a nice, super nice, but nice because of the crank arms. Next up, did a Wangolini? Now, this is nice. A Mosaic RS1. Last of the true temper steel tubing. Columbus Spirit is now used. Shram Red ETAP one by 46 at the front, 1128 at the back. It's got the Zip 202s on with Pirelli P0 tubulus. MCFK saddle and bars, pull post, QR, quick grease skewers, Silica TI cages, speed play pedals. Six and a half kilos. That's a photograph. Wow, it's light. Including all the mounts and cages. So yeah, so not, it's a nice bike. Crank isn't quite at three o'clock, but I'll, I'll give. I'll let you. I'll let you have it. Nice, nice uh, kind of imagery as well. I like the backdrop. Oh, flush stem as well. Slams that stem, which creates very nice lines within the bike because you have the horizontal top tube, the horizontal stem, and then you get the horizontal line onto the levers. So beautiful. Shallow rims again. I love those. One bike. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I'll give that, I'll give that a super nice. Yeah. Good work, good work, good work. Okay, thanks everyone. That's, uh, that's Bike Vault for, for another week. Thanks for that, Connor. Sterling job on the Bike Vault. Now, I hope you've enjoyed this week's show. Thanks for your continued support. But before I go, I wanted to quite quickly tell you about our new race pass, which has just launched. It's really exciting and hopefully a better way to watch bike races. For those who don't know about it, it's built in to the GCN app and we've been working really hard behind the scenes to get this thing going. From the app, you'll have access to more racing, more analysis, more interactive features, as well as polls, stats, and much more. And you don't have to watch it just on your phone either. Uh, you can actually use Chromecast or AirPlay to uh, fire it off onto your TV if you want to watch it there. And if you're into bike racing, which I know many of you are, then it's definitely something that's worth checking out. It's also something that Cannings has been working on since he stopped presenting the tech show. May he rest in peace. It's not dead, it's just working on the app. Anyway, I'm gonna go now. I'm gonna work on my single speed project that I've got cracking on. So yeah, I'll, uh, I'll see you soon. See you on the tech show next week.